Hello, everybody. It's so Walter, the So Walter Jones Show here. It's so good to see you. Last night, Tuesday, August the 9th, we did our first Zoom class on the Book of Revelation. Oh, what a what a night. Great fellowship by the bunkers. These are many people around the world. We've got them all over the world, believe it or not. Some of them couldn't get on last night because of Zoom's little thingies um, that we need to try and fix. Nevertheless, they're there. And the people want to learn about this book, a book that many pastors and preachers don't preach from, don't teach from because they may not understand it. So I took you all through um, chapter one. But before we got there, we went to the reasons behind the book, why, who wrote it, what's the purpose of it's being written by challenging you on the information in the Old Testament. That's what we did last night. We recorded it and we're going to play it for you, those of you who couldn't make it and those of you who would like to join this free masterclass on the book of Revelation. We're going a few weeks. And so if you do, the email is in the description below. The email is in the description below on YouTube. Gifted friends, number one at gmail.com. Send me an email, put bunker family in the description uh, and uh, you will be let in for this coming Tuesday. And each Tuesday, we use the same uh, ID and the same passcode for all of the sessions so we don't have to send you out a new one every week. All right? Please enjoy the teaching. It was interactive. We did a pop quiz at the end. I've shaved it and edited it down so that you won't be inundated with stuff that's not necessary. Okay? But I'll see you. This coming Tuesday in the class, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Have your notes ready. Let's have a great time in the Lord. See you soon. Bass. It's the show that will get you thinking and where the topics are hot. Feel free to comment whether we agree or not, cause he's got something to say. Sir Walter Jones, Sir Walter Jones, he's got something to say. Sir Walter Jones, Sir Walter Jones Jones. Come on in. The water's fine. <laughs> Love everybody in my heart. It's so good to see all of you out there in uh, Zoom land. The bunkers are here. They have arrived. Some of you are new to this platform uh, because we've had so many issues trying to get in here for the past couple of days. Many of you, uh, your emails got lost in the shuffle, the spam folders. And I didn't know that some of you who have Gmails, it got put in this thing called the promotions folder. And it was over there and, and all over the place. And so I'm just glad that at least 100 and at least 39 of y'all made it. <laughs> The rest are probably trying to get in or they'll be here later. Several people uh, said they're coming later. So let's open up prepare God. I thank you for these people who are here. We are here studying the word of God as we do every night. But, oh, God, this is a special time for us because we're studying eschatology, the end times prophecy that was given to your son. You gave it to your son and your son gave it to man, John. And John wrote it and now we have it in our person. So God, help us to understand it, to interpret it, to know what's in the ins and outs of it so that we can teach this to our children and, and to our family and to the world that is dying. Help us, oh God, understand this book. And so that uh, those who want to know and get to cl a closer look into who you were, who you are, and who you will be, if we can get it tonight, in the next few weeks from now, Others then will hear from us and they'll get it too. And many will ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Because they too want to make it in. 
So we love you, God, and we'll give your name the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, I prepared some notes here for you. Uh, we'll go. This is only like an, this is really an introduction to. You've lost your volume. Sound. There's no sound. Hold on. Oh, okay. Yeah, when she mutes the whole room, it mutes me. And then y'all have to let me know when that happens. I, I just unmuted myself. That's the only flaw with YouTube. I'm not YouTube Zoom. And mute the whole room. The speaker is muted too. And he won't know until he see it. Uh, so let's go to our, some notes here uh, that I prepared for you. And actually, for those of you who made the eight weeks course, we've got to go back and look at some of the things we talked about on how to understand the text before we go into the book of Revelation, because it's difficult to understand algebra if you don't know basic math. So we've got to go back into some of the house rules uh, and techniques on how to understand scripture so that something as man has made revelation quite difficult. Because if you talk to a bunch of uh, theologians and apologetics and what have you, you'll see that out of the five, you're going to get probably three different interpretations uh, uh, based off of one book. And it, it can cause a problem. All right, so remember when we talked about the OICA, O observation, uh, I interpretation, C, is correlation, and we said A is application. All right, those uh, that acronym right there is the whole fabric of how we understand not just the book of Revelation, but the entire Bible, O-I-C-A. I say it a lot, and we did it uh, week number two, actually. We jumped into that teaching. We talked about exegesis versus eisegesis, and one of the biggest problems in our church today is the eisegetical teachings that's going forth because that is the wrong way to understand the scripture but yet many of you may be in fellowships and in some churches who are teaching you and quoting the scripture in an eisegetical way all right so exegesis and eisegesis are two conflicting approaches to the bible it's exegesis e-x-e-g e-s-i-s -E -E all right two different uh, uh, juxtaposing positions. Now, exegesis is the exposition or the explanation of the text based on careful objective analysis. Careful objective analysis. It means to lead out. That means that the interpreter is led to his conclusions based off of what he see in the text, okay, to lead out. The opposite, obviously, is uh, eisegesis, which is the interpretation of a passage based on subjective, not objective, subjective, non-analytical reading, all right? It literally means to lead into. So we're putting stuff in the text that is not there. And the book of Revelation even uh, tells us that you, you, those who are trying to add to the word and take out of the word, you won't even make it to heaven. All right. So it means that the interpreter, he injects his own ideas. He leans on his own understanding in the text. It becomes private interpretation, making it mean whatever he wanted to mean. So you can make the Bible say whatever you want it to say. Both of those, exegesis and eisegesis, is centered around one word, hermeneutics. H-E-R-M-E-N-E-U-T-I-C-S. Hermeneutics. You hear it a lot from the Sir Walter Jones show, and some of you have been hearing it from some of your favorite teachers. Biblical hermeneutics is the study of the principles and the methods of interpreting the text. That's basically it. The methods of interpreting the text. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved 
is what 2 Timothy 2.15 says. A worker who dot, 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 dot. We hear that from the pulpit a lot, but that is hermeneutics. He correctly handles the word of truth is what it, what it says. And the purpose of biblical hermeneutics is to help us to know how to properly interpret, understand, and obviously apply the text. That's what we're going to do in the book of Revelation. O-I-C-A. All right. Uh, let's see. Do I have anything I can write with? I'm going to pull out the whiteboard and see if we can. Well, I think I got to go to my screen here to make sure y'all see what I see. Okay. Here's the board there. All right. The the word, the other word for, you all been seeing this. They've been writing movies about it. Uh, apocalypse. Okay. They've been writing books on it. And it simply means to uncover. To uncover what? Something which is hidden. That's what apocalypse mean to uncover that which is hidden that is the other meaning that is pretty much the meaning of revelation it is not revelations with an s it is revelation because it is a whole one whole out of many one like uh the one of the models of of america all right it is interpreted unfortunately by several groups the first group is called the preterist the preterist group some of you have heard of the preterists all right they believe that all events were fulfilled in the first century church all events okay which is very difficult for some for some of you to a uh, stomach the this, that someone would actually believe after reading the book of Revelation, how could someone believe that everything that we saw there have already happened? Well, that is actually a popular teaching by the preterists. And it, it, it just is what it is. I'm trying to minimize my screen so I can see y'all. And All right. That's the, that's the first one, preterists. The second one is the historical point of view the historical point of view, okay? That means all events were fulfilled from, from the first century church, of the first century, that is, and it continues until the return of Jesus, all right? That's the historical view. I'm part a favor of the historical view, okay? But they're obviously is more to just a historical view. We'll go there in a minute. The next one is called the allegorical view, all right? The allegorical view is the entire book of Revelation is an allegory or a story, which is bet the battle between good and evil, allegorical. This allegorical view can cause a big problem because then you will see everything in the book of revelation as allegorical the last one and, and the one that i ascribe to is the futuristic view or interpretation and what is the futuristic that means uh chapters one through three is that which has been, okay, I'm, uh, where's my penny, my pen, okay, <laughs> there it is, that which has been, and then chapters, I would say, four through 22, that which will come, okay? The futuristic view is the popular view of how to interpret the book of Revelation. This is the view that the Sir Walter Jones show ascribes to. All right. Now, there's allegory in there. Absolutely. There's historic in there. Absolutely. But preterists, 
No, absolutely not. And this is the difficulty of why many pastors don't fool with the book of Revelation is because they don't understand it. And they don't understand it because of its symbolisms. All right. It is full of symbolisms. And the and the 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 problem is is that a lot of people will read the book, they see the symbolisms, they get afraid, and then they stop reading and they move on somewhere else, not understanding that the Bible interprets the symbolisms. And we're going to see the interpretation in, in chapter one. All right. This the Bible will indeed, at least in the book of Revelation, it will interpret the symbols. If you just stick around and continue to read, you'll see how Jesus is telling and explaining what these symbols mean. One reason I believe, and I think the number one reason why John didn't see so much literal, uh, that, that he used a lot of symbols in this, which made it confusing, is because he was trying to make it a little confusing, all right? He wanted to make it confusing to who? Well, he was trying to make it confusing to the enemies of the church, all right? Because who put him on that aisle? It was the Roman emperor. At that time, his name was Domination. All right? He's the one that put John on the Isle of Patmos. So John is writing everything that Jesus told him to write. But if he had written in there that Rome will be destroyed, there's no way he would have got off that, that uh, island with that book, with all that information in there. They would have killed John. So God had him to use symbols so that it can confuse the enemy of the church. It was hidden, hidden in walk the word apocalyptic. Okay. We said, we, we uh, said here, apocalyptic, uncover, hidden. All right. So this is why we believe there's so much symbolism in the, also number two, the old Testament is all throughout the book of revelation. If you read the Old Testament, you have already read the book of Revelation. You, you, did you hear me? If you read the Old Testament and the major and the minor prophets, you have already read the book of Revelation, much of it. Because John refers back to the book, the books of the Old Testament and uh, his um, understanding and teaching. Okay, his writing that is of what he saw and much of the symbolism with a twist. That's the important part right here. The book of Revelation is the Old Testament with a twist. And this is why when we're done with Revelation, well, we're not going to really be done. We're just going to go as far as, as we can. And then we're going to then go into the book of Daniel, okay? because they are side by side. They are partners in crime, all right? And then, of course, we'll go to uh, a little bit of Ezekiel and, and Zephaniah and on and on. But Daniel and the book of Revelation, they are first cousins, all right? Um, and so to understand Daniel is to understand the book of Revelation and vice versa. Now, before you go into the book of Revelation, you got to go to the beginning of the Bible, to see why was the book of Revelation even necessary. So Genesis chapter three, I don't know if I have it on the whiteboard, so I'm gonna look over here on my, Genesis chapter three, verses 15 is the first prophecy we see. Rogers, do uh, you have your Bible out? Yes. Uh, Genesis 3 and 14 and 15. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. 
Mm -hmm. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. Hostility. All right. That is enmity. Okay. Keep reading. You there? Then he said to the woman. I'm sorry. Hold on. What verse are you? I'm at six, I'm at, I'm at, I'm at 15 and I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and mm -hmm. you will strike his heel. All right. Between the seeds. This is enmity between the seeds. The popular view of King James, uh, the popular read is mostly King James because it's, it sounds familiar to many. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. All right. So he's saying, I'm going to put enmity or hostility between Satan's seed and the woman's seed. Okay. So that's, that is the fight between good and evil that we said up here, the allegory part between good and evil. It started here in Genesis chapter 315. It's called a proto-evangelium. Satan's seed and the woman's seed. This was the curse that God gave to Satan. He told him this is what's going to happen. Satan heard it and thought he knew the plan. So what did he do? He kept trying to chase after the woman's seed. And through man, he kept trying to kill man's seed because he knew that something was coming through this prophecy. And the woman's seed in between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his, he, his um, heel. So when we get to the book of Revelation, we see in, I believe, chapter 12, something. Uh, Rogers, go to Revelation 12, please. 11, one. Mm -hmm. Then I witnessed in heaven an event of great significance. Hmm. I saw a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. Hmm. She was pregnant and hmm. she cried out because of her labor pains and the agony of giving birth. Seed. Yes. Then I witnessed in heaven another significant event. What? I saw a large red dragon mm. with seven heads and mm -hmm. 10 horns mm -hmm. with seven crowns on his head. Mm -hmm. His tail swept away one third of the stars in the sky and he threw them to the earth. Yeah. He stood in front of the woman as she was about to give birth, ready to devour her baby as soon as it was born. You can stop. Y'all see what's happening here. Satan. Chasing after the seed. It didn't start here in Revelation chapter 12. It's been going on from the dawn of time ever since Adam and Eve. Now, Adam and Eve had, had, uh, had already sinned. And so in walks Cain <laughs> and Abel. All right. And then we see the evil seed of Cain happening in Genesis chapter 4, I believe. And then it, it continued. All right. And Satan kept going after the seed because he knew about Genesis chapter 3, 15. He kept doing it. And God kept hiding himself in symbolisms. All right. Again, apocalypse hidden. He kept hiding himself in symbolisms. All right. Right here. Y'all keep talking about your tongues are confusing the enemy. I'm sorry to tell you that Satan is multilingual. So you all can go ha ta ti di ta ta all you want to, but Satan was once an anointed cherub. He can speak your tongue. You understand? He's an angel. He comes, he try to come as an angel of light. Your tongues don't confuse the enemy. The word of God has always been a problem for Satan. 
because he kept chasing after the seed. To the point where Rogers, give me a favor, give me 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Start at the sixth verse to prove my point. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting at the sixth verse. We're going to read to the eighth verse. What does it say? Okay. Yet when I am among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. But not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are hmm. soon forgotten. Mm -hmm. No, the wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God. The mystery of God. All right. So pay close attention to his words here. The mystery of God. God said God kept his secret. This is, was a mystery that the principalities and these angels uh, and everything else in the stars, in the skies, didn't know God's plan. He kept it a mystery. This is why he wouldn't give his name. Moses asked, they're going to say, who sent me? And what did God say? Tell him, or them, I am that I am. And all through uh, the Old Testament, he kept hitting his, hiding his plan. Here, you're going to see even the, these uh, through these princes didn't know. Continue. Even though he made it for our ultimate glory before the world began, but the rulers of this world have not understood it. If mm. they had, they would not have crucified our glorious Lord. There you go. If they had known, they would not have put Christ on the cross. Satan didn't know. He knew that a savior was coming. He just didn't know how. He knew it was going to be seed, but whose seed? And in walk Revelation chapter 12. Understand? So, so Revelation is extremely important to the believer as it pertains to end time prophecies and eschatology. We don't read it because we, we don't understand it. And this is why we have sessions like this so that we can get the full picture because the scripture says to encourage one another in all of this, all right? So with that, since we went back to the beginning, we have to look at, look at the dispensational chart. Uh, we did this in the week, I forgot what week it was, to try and work this thing out so that we can understand why did God take man through what he took him through. Here are the dispensations. We believe that there are seven of them. I'm a dispensational teacher, all right? This is the first one, the second dispensation, third, fourth, the fifth one, sixth one, and the seventh one. And I believe that there is an eighth one, okay, after that. In a sense, obviously, this is the garden. This is, this is Eden, the first dispensation, and then conscious. Uh, and the, the first three dispensations happened so fast all right it just happens so fast over just a few chapters all the way until we get to human government all right we see where the tower of babel and then the languages you know were changed we see a recurrence of the languages changing in acts uh, chapter two on the day of pentecost so the bible is counterclockwise it's counterclockwise Okay, it goes backwards. This is how God works backwards. That which was is to be, and vice versa. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter three, I believe, and maybe 15. Rogers, I believe. What is happening now has happened before. Yeah. And what will happen in the future has happened before. And what? But God, because God makes the same things happen over and over again. There's nothing new under the sun, you all. So God looks at the end of your life and created your beginning. That's the way he works. He's, he's, he's almost counterintuitive. <laughs> okay. And it doesn't make any sense. All right. So the way up is down. So it is. And one plus one to God is not two, it's one. 
two people come together equal one to him. All right. And so right here, these are the dispensations. It start with the Gentiles first. And guess what? It's going in with the Gentiles. All right. <laughs> now, the, the Jews are absolutely going to be a part of Revelation. I'll tell you all about that in a minute. But he didn't ex he didn't just exit the Gentiles out. That's what the Jews felt. All right. This is all about us and God. Well, yes and no. The first three is about the Gentiles. This, the second half is about Israel. And that's most of what we read and we're quoting in church. We quote a lot about Israel and try and push it into which dispensation? The church. And this is why I tell people when you're trying to understand the Bible, you got to break it down into two. Uh, positions. The first position is the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. That's Israel. Israel. The, the other one is called the body of Christ. Now let's go that way. <laughs> the body of Christ. It's the church. This would be the kingdom. Uh, this thing is so small. It's hard for me to write. This is the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven. You got to understand scripture separately than you do the body of Christ. If you try to mesh them both together, you will always be confused on books like the book of Revelation. All right. That's a very hard thing to understand until someone explained it to you. All right. So when we study the dispensation, we'll see that God loved man, all men, but he chose the Israelites as his chosen people to introduce us to a man <clears throat> by the name of Yahshua or Jesus, the Christ. Okay. Jesus came to come back and save his people, the Israelites unto us. A child is born unto us. He wasn't talking to us. He was talking to the Israelites. A son is given. Now his same brothers and, and sisters put him on a cross. All right. Get him out of here because he's blaspheming. He rises from the grave, all right, and then he goes up into heaven and he, he, he sends the disciples out to do a great commission. They go out and they become or they act like they are bigots. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because they did not want to evangelize people like you and I. This is what many of the church is doing today. Many of you, not you here today, but many who are part of the Christian um, organization, y'all call it Christian dumb, act like bigots and elitists because you can't, you don't want to evangelize anybody other than people who look like you or sound like you. You don't go to Muslim communities, you don't go to Asian communities, you're just, you're just, you know, these foreigners, they're foreigners. You know, it's us and nobody else. And this is what the Jews were doing. All right. So I'm taking you through this step to show you why the book of Revelation is so important. The book of Revelation is important because it has uh, everything to do with Joseph. Right here. Has everything to do with the story of Joseph and his brother. Brothers. Joseph and his brothers. Because his brothers. I lost my screen here. At the top here is Joseph's story. At the bottom here is Jesus' story, okay? Miraculous birth, both of them. They both suffered. They both became like a king at the age of 30, okay? Seven years of plenty, ministry of salvation. Remember that? Seven years of plenty in, in Joseph. Here we see the same thing that's happening or will happen, all right, as we get into the book of Revelation, seven years of famine here, okay? Pharaoh, all in all, God, all in all. The book of Revelation is like Joseph who showed himself to his brothers. He told the, the Gentiles to leave the room. Y'all get this. Joseph told the Gentiles, the Egyptians, to leave the room, and I want to talk to my brothers. And he did. And he cried. And he showed his brothers 
his scars. Jesus and Joseph are so alike because their story lined up with almost everything they do did is parallel. The rapture is coming for those of you who believe it. And I know a couple of you bunkers don't believe in the, the pre-trib and the rapture. I get it. it. It doesn't bother me that you don't agree with me on that. It doesn't bother me at all. The truth is going to come later on in your life or your, or your death, one of the two. But the rapture is so that Joseph can clean the room out. You Gentiles are in the way. The tribulation is Joseph in the room with his brothers who denied him. Jesus is entering into a room called the tribulation. It is a coming to Jesus meeting with his brothers. Do y'all understand? You should not be there. You don't want to be there. You really do not want to be there. You understand? Because you either got to take the mark or you don't. You're going to die. You're going to get beheaded, depending on, or you got to run for your life and hide in the hill. Why? Because Jesus got to show, lift his skirt and show himself to his brothers. So you are in the way, and that's the purpose of the rapture, is to get you out of the room. And with this newfound knowledge, you all need to try and save as many folk as you can because you don't want them coming to that meeting because there's two parts of that meeting. There's the tribulation and then there's the great tribulation that you can't, many will not survive. As a matter of fact, if we get further in the book of Revelation, a couple billion will die. <laughs> and guess who's going to do it? It sounds weird, don't it? Talk to an atheist, he's going to say, see, your God is crazy. Why would your God cause all that chaos? Because he has been warning you for thousands of years. He's God. He can do what he wants to. Right? So you all could uh, uh, go to some of the charts on, on Google and look at the similarity of Joseph and Jesus, and you'll see the whole reason behind um, the, book of, the book of Revelation. Okay. So we talked about this dispensational chart. Uh, Rogers, now to further prove my point, Jeremiah chapter 30. Will you please read that? The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. He said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Mm -hmm. Write down the record, everything I said to you, Jeremiah. For the time is coming when I will restore the fortunes of my people of Israel and Judah. I will bring them home to this land that I gave to their ancestors and they will possess it again. I, the Lord have spoken. This mm -hmm. is a message the Lord gave concerning Israel and Judah. This is what the Lord says. I hear cries of fear. There is terror and no peace. Now, let me ask you a question. Do men give birth to babies? Then why do they stand there ashen faced hands pressed against their side like a woman in labor. In all history, there has never been such a time of terror. It will be a time of trouble for my people, Israel. Time of trouble. This is Jacob's trouble. Mm -hmm. Yet, in the end, they will be saved. They will be saved. For in that day, says the Lord of heavens, armies, I will break the yoke from the necks of, and snap their chains. Their the foreigners will no longer be the masters for my people will serve the Lord, their God and their King descended from David, the King I will raise up just for them. Mm -hmm. So do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant, do not be dismayed, Israel, says the Lord, for I will bring you home again from distant lands. Mm. Your children will return from the exile. They're coming home. Israel would return to a life of peace and quiet and no one will terrorize them. All right. You can stop right there. All right. So God says, Hey, I love you. I'm going to protect you. Don't worry about it. This is but troubling time is coming because as you, as she continue to read, you'll see where it says, you're not going to get away with the things that you've done though. I'm going to protect you. And the enemy is going to come over here and beat you. Why? Because you, you can't just do this crime and think that I'm not going to punish you. But in that, I'm going to still save you. And you're gonna, I'm going to return you back to your land 
uh, flowing with milk and honey. All right. Now, then we get into the book of Revelation. We see this video here. This is the Isle of Patmos right here. It's a beautiful place right now. I can only imagine what it looked like during the time of uh, John. Wow. I'd like to take a trip here. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. Breathtaking. I'm sure it didn't look like this. <laughs> Doing. And if the mission put him on this island, I I wouldn't want to leave. This this was not a punishment. <laughs> I can go on and on. Um, now that that's that's the Isle of Patmos that he was. Now, as he's writing, though, you will see the map. Let's see where's my map here. This is the map that I pulled up. You know, I often pull up when I did our, our course here. Okay. The, our eight weeks course. Where is it? Right here. A lot of things that we do is centered around American politics. All right. We we live here, so obviously we we should love our own country. But our the church's focal point seems to only be in America, and we look at the things that are going on in America as end time prophecy. Every little thing, from a hurricane to a, to a tornado to a fire to crime, we look at that, and, and some of that absolutely is true. When it comes to eschatology, though, the center of God's attention is over here. Right, this all this stuff over here, this is called they called it the Middle East. It became the Middle East. Colonizers called it the Middle East, Middle East, because they basically shaved off Africa and you know shaved it off and made it. All right, that's another that's another that's another story. All right, so when you look at the Bible, the center of the Bible is all over here. I mean, when you look at all Bible Bible maps, it has everything to do with this area here, not over here. So I can never understand how teachers of the scriptures always folk on my haters and Democrats and Republicans and and tides and orphans and all all kind of stuff. All right, a lot that conversation needs to be discussed. Yes, but it's like that's it, prosperity, and all this stuff is God's attention. Not saying He's not. He doesn't have his mind on us, but the scripture focus on this land, this territory here, especially as it pertains as we get further into the other books, we'll see how war is going to break out 
in Iraq, Iran that is, in Turkey, in Libya, in Sudan. And these nations are gonna go uh, against a little piece of land called Israel, all right? It's a, they're gonna be, they're gonna box Israel in. We talked about this, that, all right? And we've got the war in Ukraine going on right now. We've got the headquarters of Russia, which is Moscow. You, you got Putin, he's all in that thing. God's gonna put a hook in his nose. OK, and stir up Kazakhstan and all these things. All this is in the scripture. All of us in the scripture, you know, if we just do some in-depth study. But here, when it comes to the book of Revelation, we skip around it. Let me move this out the way. We skip around it because when you look at the book of Revelation, we see a lot of this happen in the birthplace outside of Africa, Turkey. Turkey. Uh, because we see the seven churches. Where are they located? Right here. That's the borders of the seven churches. And Paul, I'm sorry, John was over. Here's the, the Isle of Patmos right there. And God told him to write about the churches that you look over to your to the east, and there they are. There's those seven churches. And he set them in an, in an order, and they're in, in Turkey. All right? Because the, the gospel is being preached throughout the Grecian territory, all right, Asia Minor. And so the center of all of that is going to revert back to this area here, not over here. We don't know what's going to happen here. The Bible never even, doesn't even bring up, bring up America. Just don't do it. All right, we believe possibly there will be, uh, we would have to unite ourselves with Canada, uh, with Mexico, uh, and with our brothers and sisters over here in Great Britain, over here, to survive, our brothers and sisters in France, okay, and the Spanish territories here, I believe we're going to have to unite ourselves in order to survive and stay alive because look at Russia. Huge. And they are forced to be reckoned with. And over here, China. Keep your eye on the Asian nations. North Korea, China. Japan, all right, and Russia, all of this plays a big part in end time prophecy over there on the east, over there on the east, not over here. <laughs> now, are we a force to be reckoned with? Yes, but we brag on our weaponry when really mentally we are bankrupt. Mentally and spiritually, we're bankrupt, and that's how these nations are going to attack, all right? So this, this right here is something that just needs to be discussed a little bit more. So let's go into Revelation chapter 1, all right? And let's go through this because the prologue is the same as the epilogue. Chapter 1 is the same it's chapter 22, epilogue. It is a brilliant writing. And it was placed in this order for a reason. God knew what he was doing. It got the word out. Because we would never see this word if it wasn't for the symbolisms and all the way that God told that boy to write. We now have it today. Okay? This is a revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave to, his, uh, to him to show his servant the events that must soon take place. He sent an angel to present, uh, to present this revelation to his servant John, who faithfully reported everything he saw. This is the report of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, a wonderful opening to a wonderful letter. God blesses the one who reads the words of this prophecy to the church, and he blesses all who listen to it, message and obey what it says, for the time is near. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So then John greets the seven churches that I showed you over there in the Turkish area. This letter from John to the seven churches of the province of Asia. All right. You'll start seeing the Bible interpret itself. Grace and peace to you from the one who is right here. You are going to see the Trinity. I'm a poet, didn't know it. You're going to see the Trinity in here, 
I don't care what you believe. I don't care what your denominational belief is, your theological belief, whether it pertains to the Trinity, whether you uh, a, a modelist, God, uh, God only, or you Jesus only, it don't matter to me. I keep seeing traces of the Trinity all throughout the text, all throughout the Bible. All right. So you do not scare me <laughs> with your thoughts against the Trinity because you're going to see it right here. Grace and peace to you from the one who is, who always was, and who still is to come. That only explains one from this. All right. That's God. From the sevenfold spirit before his throne. That's the Holy Spirit, obviously. And from Jesus Christ, there's the Son. It's there. That all three of them are there. And we when we did that, we did that, uh, let's see. We talked about, you know, we did that little diagram where this, that's God right there. God is the center of everything. We talked about the Father over here. Okay. God the Father, we talked about the Son is over here, okay? And we talked about the Holy Spirit is here. There's no way around this. The best way to explain the Trinity, here. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. That's the Trinity. But the Father is not the son, the father is not the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit is not the son. They have three jobs to do, but they all are God. All right. That's the Trinity. That's what's happening here in the book of Revelation here, right here at the beginning. They all show up before this throne. And from Jesus Christ, he, he is the faithful witness to these things. The first to rise from the dead. If Jesus is the first to rise from the dead, was there a second? And if so, can y'all tell me who was the second? Hmm? Yeah, go ahead, fine. Lazarus? The key. Not the keys in the at the door in that box with all the mail in. Take my house keys off of it. That's my son, y'all. He's here. Say hello, Walter Jr. Say hello. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> my son in the background. Uh who? Somebody had give me an answer. Uh, is everybody off mute? That's Lazarus. That's brother Lazarus. Yeah. Nope. The dead in Christ. There you go. Arise. There you go. <laughs> yep. The first to rise from the dead is Jesus. First to rise. And then we came after. It's called first fruits. Mm -hmm. And the ruler of all kings of the earth, of the world. All glory to him who belongs, who I'm sorry, who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood. All right. He has made us priests for God, his father. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Sound like a wonderful doxology. Seven. He comes with clouds of heaven and everyone will see him. Everyone will see him. Quick question. <laughs> Sorry, I had to take my mute off. How is everyone going to see him? I know she, sometimes she's got to close the room because some of y'all got some echoes going on. <laughs> so bear with us here. There's a lot of stuff going to happen in the book of Revelation. I mean, some, some horrible stuff, but everybody's going to see it. How? Social media. Ah, social media. Before, before we had social media, how are they going to see it? TV. 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 Television. And how does the TV see it? Through what? Satellite. Satellite. There you go. Satellite. Absolutely. 
And those who were reading this back then couldn't understand that concept. How could everybody see one person back then? The invention of satellite wasn't happening. And this is why many people looked at this, all of this as allegory. Mm -hmm. It's all allegory. There's no way that everybody can see. But today, a lot of this stuff is revealed. Mm -hmm. Right? So everyone will see him, even those who pierce him, and all the nations of the world will mourn for him. Amen. I am Alev, and I am Tav. What's that? Mm -hmm. Alpha and Omega. and Omega. But what is Alev and Tav? The Greek alphabet. Greek alphabet. Greek alphabet. Greek alphabet. Alpha and Omega is Greek. What is Alev and Tav? The beginning oh, in Hebrew. Hebrew. That's a Hebrew. 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 Right. Yeah. Because John is going to be you're going to see through the book of Revelation, he's going to be talking to two audiences. Now, this is this book is written in Greek, but you're going to also see him talking to Jews as well. So he would have said, I am a lev and top if he was talking to the Jews. I'm Alpha and Omega. At the beginning and the end, says the Lord God, I am the one who is one. Uh, who always was and who is still. So Jesus Christ, the same, what? Yesterday, 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 preach it, preach this. All right. And then here comes the vision of the son of man. And then we start getting uh, into more of the, the, more of the symbolisms here. Um, move my, my Bible out of the way. Uh, let's see. I, John, am your brother and your partner in suffering and in God's kingdom and in the patient endurance to which Jesus calls us. I was exiled to the island of Patmos for preaching the word of God and for my testimony about Jesus. I got kicked out because I was testifying. Do, do y'all know anybody today who gets in trouble for preaching the gospel? In America, oh, it's hard. It's hard fetched to find them. You <laughs> okay, me? This yeah. is true. I agree. <laughs> this, yes, this, is true. this is true. This is true. I do get in trouble. All right, and and okay, he said here. I got kicked out for preaching the gospel. It was the it was the Lord's day. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Can y'all tell me what the Lord's day is? What day of the week is it? Saturday. 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 Saturday.
God's day. Yes. And the Apostle Paul wrote a letter about that. Romans chapter what? About having holding one day over another. Y'all remember? Mm -hmm. And eating certain foods and and judging folks for eating a certain food because he's dedicating this to the Lord. Do y'all remember that? Romans 14. Ah. What did he say about Sabbaths and holy days? Can somebody paraphrase? This is class, y'all. This class. Class is open. Every day. Keep Not every day. Anybody Sabbath. judge you? Every uh -huh. day. That's, yeah. that's it. Who are you to that's judge it. another man's servant? Come on. That's it. Y'all got it. It, it it was the Lord's day and I was worshiping in the spirit. Suddenly I heard uh, behind me a loud voice like a trumpet blast. It said, write in a book everything you see and send it to the seven churches in the cities of Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira. And he did this in order. All right. For, for a reason. Now. We get to 12. When I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven gold lampstands. And here's where the symbolisms come in. I saw seven gold lampstands and standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the son of man. He was wearing a long robe. Now let's go back. The seven golden gold lampstands. Can somebody tell me what you think these seven candlesticks represent? The church. Ah. The seven church. churches. Yes. And not just the seven churches, but the seven periods of the church Oh. age right mm -hmm. that's very important the seven periods of the church age remember I said that okay he was wearing all right uh he was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest who's wearing that Jesus Okay, Jesus. and right. what outfit? Who wears that outfit? What the is priest. That? Yes. Okay, a ruler showed up. How did I get rid of it? Okay, priest. Yes. Let's see if we can find right there. That's the priestly garment right there, and he's referring to this middle, this chest plate right here, mm -hmm. and that these twelve stones represent what? 12 tribes here. 12 tribes. 12 tribes. 12 tribes are Judah. Yeah, that's, that's right. And not just the 12 tribes. When well, you said 12 tribes of Judah, fix that. 12 gates of heaven. 12 tribes of Israel. Sorry, 12, 12 tribes, tribes of Israel. 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 Yeah. That is right, right. Because you got to remember, they were divided. Right. So there was a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. So the southern kingdom was Judah and then the northern kingdom was Israel. So if you say the 12 tribes of Judah, oh, we got a problem. Mm. Because because down there was really only, it was only what, 10 tribes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, or, or at the top was 10. I seem to be getting mixed up. One had two. Yeah. Judah had two. All right. There you go. All right. So this is what Jesus was wearing. This is what he looked like. All right. That's why they call him Rabbi. He's, he, because Jesus was the only one outside of David who was considered a prophet what else a king and a priest and a priest, and a priest. And, and a priest. that's right thank you sir that is the garment of what kind of priest high priest, high priest. Yes. High priest. yes high priest because you're going to see further in this in this book what kind of priest he is and uh among other priests all right let's see uh, he was wearing a long robe with a gold sash his head and his hair were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were like flames of fire all right now unfortunately 
for those of you who are very pro black, y'all uh-huh. y'all know, may know where I'm going with this. <laughs> you pro black people, if uh-huh. I hear if I hear another one of you Hebrew Israelites tell me that, <laughs> that this is a depiction of Jesus being black, we are not saying that he ain't dark skin because even the Europeans have confessed of his dark skinness, okay? But you cannot isogetically take this and remove the symbolism and look at it at literal. Again, mm-hmm. there's a lot of symbolisms going on here through our revelation, but until yeah. y'all see something that look like it might be a black man, all of a sudden it turns literal. <laughs> see what y'all do? You drag me crazy <laughs> with that. Why is that yeah. red? <laughs> So this is still symbolistic with a touch of literalism, all right? Uh, Right here, his head and his hair was white like wool, white as snow. All he's doing is repeating the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. That's all he's doing. Uh, Rogers, go to Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, please. Daniel verse 9. I watched as thrones were put in place and the, uh, and the ancient one sat down to judge. Mm-hmm. His clothing was as white as snow, his hair like the purest of wool. There you go. And you don't hear people going there and say, see, that's a black man. They always go to Revelation 1 and say he's a black man. He is called the ancient what? Of days. Of days. Of days. Of days. Absolutely. Of days. His feet were, let's go back up, and his eyes were like flaming fire. fire. His feet were polished, bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. That is a uh, the voice of someone in authority, and we we hear that same voice when when the rapture comes, come up hither. We see that we hear that same voice in the second coming. We hear that same voice uh, a lot. All right, this is this is the same voice that we hear. A, a sheep hear my sheep hear my what? Voice. Voice. And what? And a stranger they will not follow. No, for them bunkers. <laughs> them bunkers. I tell you, the smartest folks I know. He held seven stars in his right hands. Uh oh. He held seven stars in his right hand and a sharp edge. Let's go right here. Seven stars in his right hand. Sure. What do y'all think? Seven churches. Churches? The pastor message to the churches? Ah! Uh-huh. The messengers uh, for messengers. the churches. And said angels. They, they're called angels, angels. but but uh, there is a fight among uh, the theologians whether those are the pastors of those churches or whether those are angelic beings who are uh, have have uh, positions in that church. They're designated for each of those churches. You understand what I'm saying? So he held seven stars where in his right hand. Mm-hmm. His right hand is a is a symbolism. If he put it in his left hand, it would have been something else. Right. So what do y'all think that's all about? It's sustained or with Christ. Mm. With Christ, is it the right hand? Mm-hmm. The he word put is it in, like a two-edged sword. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rogers, give me John chapter 10. Start the first verse. I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief, a thief. and a robber. Mm. 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 So he held the seven stars in his right hand. I mean, he welcomed you in. Mm-hmm. You came through the front door, not the back door, because people who are giving Jesus the left hand of fellowship are thieves. <laughs> <laughs> if he handle, if a man reaches out his left hand and shake your hand, uh, reject him. 
Even if he got something in his right hand, tell him, put it down. Mm. Put it down. Shake my hand right. And a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth. Word. Ah. Word. word. Hebrews um, 4 and 12, Roger. 12. Y'all already there. You already there. J. Red, was that you? Who was that? For the word of God is alive and powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between yes. the soul and the spirit, mm -hmm. between the joint and marrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you you meat cutters out there, boy, y'all know how it is to make sure that your knife is sharp. Mm -hmm. It takes you forever to cut that meat if your knife is not sharp enough. So this two-edged sword cut through the marrow, the marrow and the and bone. The bone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the bone. Mm -hmm. And that two-edged sword, it goes in Cutting. And when you come out, what? It's cutting. It's cutting. cutting. <laughs> still cutting. Yeah. It's still cutting. cutting Man, way. double edge. Cutting, cutting, and cutting. Y'all and y'all cutting up right now. <laughs> and his face, his face was like the sun in all of its brilliance. brilliance. Give mm. me Malachi chapter four, two. Because there's a word that's not in the Bible, but it's a word that we all have adopted. But for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And you will go free, leaping with joy like calves led out to pasture. What kind of righteousness? The son. son. How you spell son? S U N. S U N. Not S O N. Uh huh. <laughs> you get it? Yes. And this son of righteousness is called what? Shekinah. His glory? Yeah. What? Shekinah glory. His yes. glory? Yeah. Shekinah. Shekinah glory. That's who he is. All right, the, the Jews came up with that phrase, so that's the best way they can explain it. The Shekinah glory, it simply means he caused, he caused to dwell. Mm. Shekinah mm. glory. Give me Exodus, Exodus chapter 13 and 20, and we're wrapping it up, y'all. I'm at the end. I just want to read chapter one. Exodus 13. 20 so we can get this pop quiz going the israelites left succor and camped at etham on the edge of the wilderness the lord went ahead of them he guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud and he provided light at night with a pillar of fire this allowed them to travel by day or by night and the lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or pillar of fire from its place in front of the people. Yep. Shekinah glory. He calls to dwell. All right. Y'all got that? All right. We're at the end. Um, that priestly garb that she's wearing is showing y'all that he is who? Melchizedek. 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 He is showing y'all in the book of Revelation. This is the same Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. who, who saw him first? Abraham. Abraham. Abram. 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 Say, say his name right. Abram. Abram, Abram saw Abram. him first. Right. What was different about Melchizedek? He had no mother. He had no genealogy. That's right. No beginning. No, no end. No, and he was the king of Salem. There you go. Yes. And Shalom. Salem means what, y'all? Peace. Uh, Peace. It means um Peace. Jerusalem. <laughs> Shalom. King okay. of uh Peace. Peace. King of Peace. Peace. Okay. Peace. So this Melchizedek pops up in the book, the book of Hebrews. He became all right. The the priesthood came from who though? 
No. 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 Aaron. Oh, Aaron. Oh, oh, Aaron. Oh, Aaron. 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 The Levites. A Aaron. A A A Aaron. A Aaron. A Aaron. Did not. We thought he was clear. No, no, no. Okay. So the priesthood came through Aaron, but then there was a change. Right. All right. Because Aaron is under the old what? Covenant. Oh, covenant. The old covenant. All right. And so Melchizedek came as a pre what? Incarnate? Pre Christ. Pre incarnate. Pre incarnate. Pre incarnate. Of Christ, right. So, but this Melchizedek didn't come under Aaron. No. All right. So mm -hmm. he is of his own priesthood. Right. So Jesus came. He mm -hmm. now established a what kind of covenant? New, new covenant. A new, new covenant. New covenant. It's also called so the shedding of his blood. Yeah, new covenant. Blood covenant. New covenant. What kind of covenant? A blood, blood covenant. No? Better. You see, you, you can't just say new because everything that's new is not good. Right. Ask, ask Coca-Cola Company. They gave y'all the new Coke. Continue. Continue, that, Covenant. That, that Coke was so horrible, they had to go <laughs> back to the original Coke. All right? So new is not always improved, but so um, here we have a better Covenant better, better through COVID. Melchizedek. Okay. All right, so then this is why now he is priest, but he's not just priest. He is what kind of priest y'all said earlier? Priest. Uh, high priest. High priest. High priest. High priest. High priest. And there's no other priest higher nope. than the high priest. And then he's, he's he, then Jesus he's becomes a king. a king. So he's a kingly king. priest. But then he becomes a king what? Of what? A king. A king. A king. Lord of Lord. Yes, that, and Lord of Lord. You see what I'm saying? So he's showing his deity in this chapter here. Chapter. John is mm -hmm. seeing this man and his deity. And John is looking at the Old Testament. And he's saying, oh, I get it now. Because John understood this, the old scroll. He understood the Torah. So he's, mm -hmm. Jesus is now showing a man who's very familiar with the Torah on how to now the yeah. Old Testament is the New Testament what? Reveal. The Old Testament. Uh, what was the, the question? What? Reveal. Conceal. No. Conceal. 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 Reveal. Conceal. Yeah. No. Oh, conceal. no. And then the New yeah. Testament is the Old Testament. Reveal. 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 John now is seeing the revealing or the revelation. Y'all getting it now? Reveal. Reveal. He's seeing like the reveal. revelation or the apocalyptic. That which was mm -hmm. hidden, he's now mm -hmm. seeing it now mm -hmm. through Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand it now? Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Okay. Reveal. Oh, Jesus. Really I know. I Can know. You say that last part again. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what part? That let Old Testament that represents. Yeah, the Old Testament is the New mm -hmm. Testament, mm -hmm. which is concealed. Okay. All right. This is why the book of Revelation reads like the Old Testament, mm -hmm. because it was so it was concealed in the Old Testament. So when you read the New Testament, you will see where Paul and the other disciples and the other apostles keep saying, uh, have you not read? Have you not heard? Here's what the scriptures mm -hmm. say. And they keep repeating mm -hmm. the Old Testament. The Old Testament. Sure oh, no. Jesus kept repeating from the Old Testament. Now John is repeating from the Old Testament mm -hmm. because the Old Testament and the New Testament has always been here but through the old testament god then reveals himself through his son on the cross which when he died the new dispensation pops in and that dispensation is what reveal the reveal the of what it's grace grace grace, grace. Mm. grace. y'all getting it now all right so the from the first dispensation uh, matter of fact what number is the dispensation of grace? Six. Six. Which is the number of who? Man. man. Come on. Yo, y'all got it. Oh, got man. It. All right. Because this, mm -hmm. this dispensation of grace is all about us. Yep. It's, it's about man. And the grace that God has on man. 
right mm. now. And how much more would grace abound, though? <laughs> Your time wow. is winding up. My it's Lord, my Lord. Mm-hmm. Write mm. down what you have been have seen. He's saying both the things that are now happening and the things that will come. happen. This is the meaning of the mystery. Here it is. Remember I told y'all earlier that the Bible is going to interpret itself. The book of Revelation will. Here it is. This is the meaning of the mystery of the seven stars you saw in the right hand and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels. Yeah. You see it now? Wow. Yes. Yeah. Of the seven wow. churches. And the seven lampstands wow. are the seven churches. There it is. Wow. Man, I wow. tell you. And that's just chapter one. <laughs> um, Great. That's just chapter one. There, there's there's yeah. obviously 21 more to go, but we 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 ain't got time. Not tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right now. <laughs> pop quiz. Uh, staff, if you will put the quiz on the wall here, let's see if you all can answer. There's only five. I don't want to hurt you tonight. There's only five. They should be easy. You see it on the screen. If you if you dialed in, you may not see it. If you're on your phone and you dialed in, you not see it. But if you if you did it on your computer or if you're on your phone through the video, you see it. Can y'all see the questions? Yes. All right. Go ahead and answer them right quick. I can't see all the answers. Oh, so many. Number one. I don't see the quiz. Yeah, I see it. Oh, it's uh, number three. I don't see the questions. They're Roman. Okay, somebody got to help them out. Some of y'all who are on your phones, man. I don't know. You meant to turn, flip your phone over. I don't know. It's the Roman <clears throat> Emperor and Okay. If, if you guys cannot see the quiz, um, if it's not scrolling for you, I apologize. It's in the system. If you have a touch screen finger, uh, a, a touch screen screen you should be able to scroll up with your finger and get to the next question otherwise yeah. put your cursor on top of the quiz in the right hand corner there is a gray bar take your cursor and place it over the gray bar and pull it down that will get you to the next question if this feature is not working with you just stand by and uh, chill while while the people who can Take the quiz, take it, and then uh, we'll get it to you in the in the mass email. Okay, that sound fair? Okay. Yes, I have it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Oops. I don't think I'm waiting for the answers. <laughs> um, my uh, these the answers don't look. <laughs> I mean, what, what the answer is is not on here. For number five, I yeah. probably got it wrong, but I'm done. The, the answer is not there. Yeah, for what we read, so we supposed to just pick what's most related. I'm just gonna pick number. Number five says, what was Jesus' feet made of? And as you scroll down, it says, the first cho- uh, choice is copper, iron, yeah. brass, or gold. Or gold. But Which it says here his feet was like uh, burnished bronze. Mm-hmm. So is that <laughs> copper? Okay, excuse me. That, excuse no, me. No. <laughs> to... Bronze is the same as brass. Look it in is. the King James Version. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nope. Don't look at the picture above. It's in the King book. James Version. Well, we was reading out of the New Living. Okay. When the, the teacher taught the lesson, he said specific words. He yes. said either copper, iron, brass, or gold. Those were the four choices. And he said the words copper, iron, brass, or gold. So whichever word he says, that's the answer to the question. Oh. Okay. So don't, don't worry about bronze whether it's a it's the king james version or nlt version new life version let's yeah. go with what was taught oh. tonight and a make lot of, choices 
I didn't write anything down about you got the right hand, the sword, the seven stars. I don't know. I'm just gonna guess. Is that Vera? Who... Vera, is that you? No. <laughs> Who's that? This is Tetra. Tetra. Oh, come on now. Tetra of all people. <laughs> <laughs> like to get 100. Well, you know, <laughs> I don't like trick questions. Every 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 class, we're gonna have a pet, and teacher is the pet. <laughs> teacher, okay, okay, I'm just gonna <laughs> put it here. Yeah, put it there. <laughs> put, it there. <laughs> put it there, sister. Put it there. Put it's, it gonna there <laughs> we, it's gonna be all right. You amongst family, you amongst family. Yeah, uh, this is a no judge zone. No, no <laughs> judgment. Zone. No judgment. All right, we're shutting it down. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. This is just about your re recollection. I got okay. one more. Oh, I got okay. Can you put the quiz back up there for one minute? I got me. kicked out, so I didn't see the quiz. You got okay, I'm out. done. <laughs> when you get an answer, who supposed to give it to? Me? We're going to give it to you when I'm we done. end the poll. I just want the quiz up there. I did take notes, April. <laughs> All right. Three pages, but I ain't about the feet. We can't see the quiz again. Hello. I, I got kicked out. I didn't see the quiz. Oh, that's too bad. We gonna oh. we got to move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was too bad. We got to move on. Like the screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We're ending the quiz. Okay. okay. Go for it, Rogers. I think the answer should pop up. Okay. Y'all see the answers? No. 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 I didn't see the okay, quiz. Okay, yeah. I see him yeah. now. You I, see see the qu I see the quiz, okay, but I don't see no answer. Right. Okay, got that, got right. that right. Got that well, right. Got well, some that people right. see the answer, which means... Got that right. Got that right. <laughs> got that right. <laughs> Yay! Oh, oh, got that right. I got a hundred. I got a hundred. All right. Is that, was that teacher? You got a hundred? Yeah, yeah. It's about time you did it. You need to stop. So 99 and a half don't won't do. <laughs> okay. So where are the results of it? All right. I can't see it. Where I are miss the one. You miss one? Oh Lord. Yes, sir. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. You still passed. I got one right. Uh, I got a hundred. Yeah. I got a hundred. Yeah. Yay, Tanya. Woohoo. Oh, Lord. Look at this. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sleepy. Y'all going to the back room and praise okay. All right. Let me give y'all the answers. For those of you who didn't see it, the, the, the who banished John from the, the island of Patmos, somebody give the answer. Empress Diana. 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 Empress on what day was Sunday. that? Sunday. 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 Okay. Sunday. Who's the seven angels? Archangels. Archangels. Archangels and messengers. No. 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 They're the angels. The church angels. That was a the trick leader. question. They're the spiritual leaders. Spiritual leaders. Yeah. Spiritual leaders. Yeah. Spiritual leaders. Yeah. Yeah. Spiritual leaders. Yeah. That was a trick down. question. God dang it. Who, who was the Still third? Still got a hundred. What was the third uh, dispensation? Human government. Human government. 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 Promise. I missed that. Brass. 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 Well, I got that 99 and a half. I'm just saying. Yeah, me too. I got that 99 and a half. I thought I had a hunt. Amen. All right. The Travel. I see the Travel and the William. What y'all do? Did y'all do all right? Take yourself off mute. We got 100, but we not seeing said, what it's. Oh, y'all just. Oh, didn't see oh you off mute. I hear you. We not seeing it, but. Oh, we you didn't see it, huh? Were you on your laptop? Yes. Hmm? Oh, you, you <laughs> on your laptop. Chat. I don't know. I don't it understand. Can go where it says chat. And where yeah. it says it, it's says supposed to just popped up on everybody's screen. So quiz. why some didn't see it, I don't know why. We got them all right, Sir Walter. Yeah. yeah. Good stuff. I didn't see where mine, which one, mine was wrong. Mine was still all blue. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is how we're going to do I it every week, right you all. Here. Hey, Lady T. I'm doing right. this. 
this is how we're going to do it. Now, are there any questions from, from the beginning to where we Somebody stopped? Somebody's saying something, are there any so I'm not questions? sure. No, yes. I have one real quick. Yes. At the end, when we were at the very end, you said something about grace. And I just kind of missed that. Who's this speaking? Do you remember? Talithia Grant. Oh, hey, Talithia. Dispensation of grace? What? Uh, what After I said about grace? About the, yeah, the Old Testament and New Testament concealed. And we said six is the number of man. And there's something you said right before that about grace when we were talking after about Mechizedek. Mm -hmm. After Mechizedek. If you don't remember, that's okay. The number for grace. You said something about the, the number for grace was six. The dispens yeah, yes. actually, no, the dispensation. The number for man. Oh, the dispensation? Yeah. Right. What yeah. number was the dispensation of grace? And I think okay. you were all six. Yes, six. Good. And then I, then I said, and I asked man. what was, yes, what was hey. the uh, number six representing? Man. All right. Man. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. All right. Um, Where is that? Any other questions? No. Good night. Chandra, you know what? You said something about the kingdom uh, was for the Jews. Is it safe to still teach about the kingdom of God now? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You know why? <clears throat> Man, Eleanor. Because when Jesus comes back, let me pull out my board here. When when Jesus comes back, he's he's not just coming back for the Jews, is he? No. 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 He's coming back for the whole world. The whole world. Mm -hmm. right? okay. The whole world yes. and those who are part of the world is going to be two types of people. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the ones who came down from heaven, mm -hmm. which are, mm -hmm. hopefully is y'all. Right. <laughs> okay. And the ones who raised from the dead. The ones who are already on the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We who are coming down from heaven mm -hmm. will be doing what to the ones on the earth? Judge. War. Judge. 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 This is a time of peace. Judge. Uh, Judge. Ruling and reigning. All right. This, this, okay. The, this is a time of peace. And it, that time of peace is going to be going on for how long? 1,000 years. 1,000 years. 1,000 years. years. Mm -hmm. What is Jesus going to be doing? Is he, is he back in heaven? Looking down? No, he's on no, the throne. He's yeah. raining. He's 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 raining. Of Christ. Of Christ. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Why do you think I said separate body of Christ and the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, which is used interchangeably? Kingdom of God. Why do you think I said when, you study, when you're studying? You the kingdom of God was because the kingdom of God is Israel. Huh? The kingdom of God was for the Israelites. And then. And body of Christ, the Christ body of Christ, Christ. Is for the church. The church. The church. Yes. What's the it's danger the though of meshing them together? together? The law and freedom. Ah. Law. Uh, law. Versus what? Grace. Freedom. Grace. Freedom. Grace, grace, liberty, that's right? And what's happening here when you are trying to mesh church with Israel, you're trying to push two dispensations together, you get what's called replacement, replacement what? theology. Yeah. Yeah. Replacement theology. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what is that? That is when we substitute the church for the Jews. There you yeah. go. So when somebody went to the book of Ezekiel and mm. it, it brought up dry bones, oh. somebody said that's the church. Yeah. But the scriptures <laughs> interpret what the dry bones were. What were they? I forgot. 
Israel. Israel, yeah. The whole house of Israel. Wasn't a church. Mm -hmm. It's coming alive again. Yeah. You see how dangerous that is? Yeah. yeah. And these bones live. Yeah. So this okay. is why I say you got to separate kingdom from the body of Christ. Body of Christ. And so that the people who are drinking milk mm -hmm. won't mesh these together and come up with one church and then push some people in law and push others in grace. Because when you do that, then when y'all are raising money, you are cursing people with what? The law. With a curse. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing that through what type of giving? That's what you're doing. So you've so got to separate the two or you're going to have a mess on your hand. That's so solid. Already got that. Be back in bondage. Just stay you in back bondage. in bondage because you right. attach tithing to salvation. Salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which means Jesus got to get off the cross. Again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, thank Because he went up there. <laughs> he went up there to oh, be a baby. what? <laughs> <laughs> He went up there to be a curse. Cursed is a man that hangs on tree. And where's that found, y'all? Yeah, he was a curse. Where's that found? The curse redeemed us from the curse. Where's that found? Uh, oh, is that Hebrew? Like Galatians something. He became a curse for it? Yeah, find it. Galatians 5. Galatians. Find it. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> I'm tired. Somebody find it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now y'all, I know y'all ain't tired because the So Walter Jones show don't even start until 15 minutes. Oh. <laughs> I'm exhausted. It's not even. That is Galatians 3 and 13. Galatians 3, 13. What is that? Yes. Galatians 3, 13. Uh, 3, 13. Christ, Christ redeemed us from the curse Christ of the redeemed law. Right. Mm -hmm. By becoming redeemed. a curse for us, for it is written. Yeah. What, what's redeemed? What does that mean? To buy back. Mm. Yes. With his mm. blood. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm sorry, we, we all got muted. Yes, uh, yeah, excuse me, uh, Elder. Excuse yeah. me one second. Mm -hmm. Because I'm getting um, a couple of complaints from uh, some of the older saints. They're yeah, they saying, this is, they said, this is too much. Okay, so we're all excited. And everybody's <laughs> jumping at one time because this is just fabulous. It's just fabulous. The fellowship is fabulous. But um, let's tone it down just a little bit so that um, those that are on their jitterbugs or whatever they're on or, or whatever reason they're having a problem, I don't mean no shade because I got one, you know. Anyway, <laughs> but let's tone it down a little bit and try to go one-on-one -on -one, and then uh, we won't have to mute it again. So if I ever cut everybody off, um, Again, Pastor, out of control. Pastor, can you, can you just unmute yourself and you continue to talk and then we'll allow people to come back in again okay we're going to do it decent in the order okay thank you all right clock keeper <laughs> clock, clock, clock keeper okay all right so i hope that answered your question all right oh, i i like the room open because this is the time to discuss and answer questions or ask questions that is all right we got just a few minutes late left uh left that is um I want to make sure we all get this because I'm not returning to this next week. We're moving on to chapter two, three, and four. All right. So if you got a question, open the room back up and let me let's see if we do we have any more questions. If not, we can shut it down and talk about what we're gonna do next week. Okay, let's play nice. Okay, we should be up and going. All right, no question. Okay, good stuff. I have a question, please. Uh -oh. Yes. Say this your name. And I'm asking, I see that the uh, lesson is being recorded. Are we going to have access to the recording, please? Because yes. I am one of those senior citizens who get kind of 
you know, messed up when so many people start talking. I apologize. But A will do that to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get it. All, all the sessions are being recorded. And upon um thank you. All we all sessions are I'm asking the co co-hosts if they could locate that background noise, please, and get rid of that, please. Okay. Um, all sessions are being recorded. And it's up to Sir Walter to distribute them after he review it. So we'll defer to him and wait to see if he wants to eat the last possible. Yeah. Um, Thank my, you. Pardon, my, pardon me. I'm not older. <laughs> my plan is to put it on uh, just this session because I want to see how it works. My plan is to put this session on the So Walter John Show YouTube channel so that you all don't be waiting on emails. Your emails. It either gets bounced back, it gets hidden in spam folders all over the place. I get inundated with email requests. What happened? What happened? Where's my so um after this is over, once it saves it on my computer, I pray God it does. <clears throat> I have to edit it down because there's some music I played at the beginning and YouTube is gonna strike it and all that stuff. So I gotta kind of edit that. Put it on my YouTube channel, then there it is for all of you to see it. The advantage of doing that is that others also will see it too and want it, and they, they'll be interested in wanting to join you all for the class. Um, but I'm only going to do this as a test for this class. All right. And then after that, people are going to get it. They, they have to go to uh, the website. And um, hopefully I'll have that website up where y'all can just go to the website for these resources. Um, because again, the email system is a headache. Every marketer have this problem. If any of you are marketers, you would understand autoresponders are not perfect. And we sent out almost 400 emails, okay? And um, sometimes the numbers just don't add up. We sent out 400 and uh, 100 come back, <laughs> you know? And even though y'all have real emails, the system will say that's not a real email. We don't know why it does that, even though I'm, we're not, I'm not typing emails in the system. I'm just copy and pasting it from what y'all sent me. So I'm not typing anything. So it's supposed to be a real email, but the system may reject it. And so that's why some of you were complaining that you didn't get it. Well, we sent it, uh, it's, but it's, it's not our fault. So to try to alleviate these issues, we're going to start sending you all to a website for updates and, and what have you. Okay. We're not teaching the, all 22 chapters of Revelation in depth, or we will be here for a year. All right? You got to understand that. This is, this is a brief overview of the book of Revelation, because the paid online course will be ready soon. All right? This is just a practice session. The paid course will have charts and, and tests and and videos and everything you can you can find okay on there i painstakingly was re been recording recording and recording it's going to take me a little while but you'll have to go there and pay for that course and then there won't be no talking it's just me and the screen okay and so the older saints won't have to worry about the interruptions <laughs> and you younger saints too all right so give that about two to three weeks for that to be up the bunkers will have a bunker rate and everybody else will just, unfortunately, they just gonna have to pay a little more because they should have came when we asked them to join the bunkers. <laughs> they should have came. All right. Next week, chapter two, chapter three, we're going to talk about the churches, the seven churches. And we may do chapter four as well and find out what's going on with these churches and how they are related to who we are today. And trust me, you're going to see your church in several of those churches and i'm hoping it ain't laodicea because <laughs> some of y'all belong to the laodicean baptist church <laughs> of the apostolic faith kojic all right you can open the room and let's say good night to everybody if you got any more questions
All right. You can open up the room and we can we can fellowship. We can say goodnight. There was about 154 of you all who were here. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. 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 Good night, everybody.
Pastor, 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 yes. pastor, can I say yes. something? Uh -huh. Okay, um, this is to the this is to the body. This is to the body. Um, in order for us to have a really good um, session, we can be uh, very aware of others. I know it gets exciting and the noise level is really over the top sometimes. So mm. you hear somebody else excited and they're answering. If you could just please pull back. I know you want to answer, especially if he's teaching and he stops to say, what did God say in John 3, 16? If you hear one person say it, can we just let it be said? If he say John 3, 16, you know, you know, if everybody push it and you heard the answer, you know it's correct, we can move on to the next one because I, I'm, I'm a senior citizen. I know what it's like to suffer through some of these issues that people are having. So if we could be mindful of that, that would be awesome. I love you guys. You had a great time. I love the way you made it in the waiting room. I love the way that you found it. If you come back and we send an email out and you don't get the email, check your spam. And for Gmail, there's another name. It's a, a promotion folder. Okay. And Gmail, <coughs> if they don't recognize um, SUV, they're going to throw it in what's called promotion. Find out what your junk drawer is and grab it out of there. Uh, we, we send a first, a second, and a, a third. Uh, dealing with a behemoth machine. So if you can do that, if you don't get it, just wait, send an email. But uh, I thank all of you for how you uh, responded. This was great. Amen. I'm, Amen. I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done fussing. All right, clock keeper. <laughs> okay. Turn, turn your mouth off. <laughs> there you go. That's good. That's good. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all again. Uh, the, you know, the, the, the saints... It's, it's, I wish we were in the same place physically so we all can just embrace each other and, and intercede for each other and, and laugh and all that good stuff. That would be wonderful. Uh, but thank God for Zoom uh, because we would have to travel all over the place to get to each one of y'all, but here you all are here. I'm just blessed that baby Dinah Bunker is here. Y'all, <laughs> we call her baby Bunker. The Lord has blessed her, and He continues to heal her. She had she had surgery, mm -hmm. and uh, she's still recuperating. And she looks amazing. She looks amazing. Uh, and so we are definitely Thank one you. one big family. <clears throat> so those of you, we at, one thing I forgot to do today was ask for a prayer request. So if some someone will remind me each session. We need to have a time that we would pray for people who are having ailments, uh, because the body of Christ is is. Uh, they, they're getting sick their bodies are being sick and a lot of it has to do with uh, oh gosh if you eat Amer anything american you you bound to get sick our food is just not healthy man I don't, know, I don't know what's happening in america where it's just you walk into a church and many people are just sick and the church is supposed to be the place where people are healed but they're sick like the world. Yes, sir. So there's something going on there and we need to really uh, analyze and examine that. Why? Why is why the church just as sick as the world? Mm. And some of it is self-infliction. You need to know that. All right? I boldly yeah. say that. Some of this is self-infliction. <clears throat> and the Lord has given us wisdom to study our bodies, you know, and know what to eat and what not to eat. Because... <clears throat> We having fun now, but 20 years after that, you say, I shouldn't have had that much fun. You know, and now it's expensive because if you don't have insurance, God help you. You know, so let's uh, be mindful of what we're putting our bodies, our temples. Y'all said your temple is the what? what y what's y'all say? Body is a temple. Of the Holy Spirit. It's, and it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is dwelling in a temple that is yes, racked with pain. Yes, sir. And sometimes it's because of something that we did. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to really ask God for wisdom on what to put in our mouths and what not. Yeah. 
Amen. Because what we do is we'll, we'll put stuff in our mouth and then go to the church for prayer. Uh, Come back home, put that same thing in our mouth and go back to the church for prayer. Yes, sir. You, you see what we're doing, right? And we'll eat, we're eating, we're getting ready to eat some food that's been prepared for us and we pray over poison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, Lord, bless this poison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. And you know it's poison. Mm. I can see if you don't know it's poison. But you know it's poison. You say, no, nah, no, nah, God bless this poison. And then you eat it. And then God says, boy, are you tempting me? <laughs> wow. Are you tempting me? Wow. Right? So do I, do I, it's like God is like saying, do I bless this? Wow. And you purposely putting poison in your system? And we don't even think about that stuff. We just don't. No. We don't. God going to heal me. Okay. You keep pushing God. Mm. Right. Regardless, I'm gonna still pray for for those of you who are sick, so that God will heal you, but also that He heal your mind, that you will be a little more disciplined in your body. All Amen. Right? That's Amen. just some pastoral study, <laughs> and I do not apologize for it. <laughs> All right, God bless you. Uh, bless we're gonna you. sign off, and the best way to sign off is we're gonna do like Clubhouse. If y'all don't know what Clubhouse is, a Clubhouse room does a countdown. Yes, sir. And when we do the countdown, they hit that off button, everybody gone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause we can be here all night. Uh, Cause it's just good to see you all. <clears throat> all right. Clock keeper or the who was the Deatrice Carter and Dinah is also their their moderators. <clears throat> Which one of y'all gonna hit the button after I yes. count down? I got you. I got huh? you. Oh, you want to make all of them disappear <laughs> let, Didi, Didi, let Didi hit the button. <laughs> Let all y'all seem like a, a pre rapture kind of experience. <laughs> if you left on this board, if you left on this board, you missed out. <laughs> <laughs> William hit that board, he put that paper up there. <clears throat> I'll see you, man. All right, let's count it down. You ready? Uh, yes, sir. Parting is such sweet sorrow. <laughs> Here we go. Ten. Nine, do I start that high? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bye bye. Love y'all.